the rule of two was an ancient Sith doctrine that led to the end of the Galactic Republic and allowed for Sidious to seize control and declare himself Emperor. One millennium before the destruction of the Jedi Order and the implosion of the Galactic Republic, a powerful Sith Lord named Darth Bane authored what would become the cornerstone of salvation for the Sith Order. This was the Rule of Two. After leaving the Sith Academy at Korriban, a story that is mentioned in my other video, The Naming of Hoth, and will be elaborated upon in further videos. Darth Bane turned his back on the Sith principles of Lord Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness. At the time, Lord Khan promoted equality in the Sith Order in a futile attempt to address the problem of rivalry that destroyed great Sith Lords and their followers in the past. With his incredible battle meditation, Lord Khan rallied thousands of Sith both Force users and not, onto his cause of destroying the Republic. However, Bane was clever enough and powerful enough in the Force to resist Khan's manipulations and find a flaw in his argument. Bane realized that, although Khan's way of thinking stopped rivalry and infighting, it made them no better than the Jedi and turned their backs on the very principles of the Sith which were that the strong ruled while the weak served. The Academy on Korriban was Bane's home for many years after following his sudden exit from the Sith military forces. It was where the strongest dark force potentials were sent, and Bane quickly proved that he was one of them during a lightsaber duel against another student named Foharg. Early on in Bane's tenure as Sith Apprentice, he had been bested by Foharg quite readily. However, when Bane later requested a rematch, Foharg confidently accepted it. During the battle, Foharg disabled Bane's fighting arm, and defeat seemed eminent for the future Sith Lord. But as Foharg mocked his seemingly defeated opponent, Bane took full control of the dark side as he never had before, and slew the Makarth strangling the life from him. In killing Foharg, Bane realized that his abusive father had not died many years ago due to a heart attack, but had been murdered by Bane when he had subconsciously used dark side energy to kill him. After the battle, Bane began to lose control of the force, as he could no longer access his anger and rage to fuel his dark side powers. Because of this, the Sith Masters at Korriban started to ignore the once slotted apprentice, and Bane retreated to the abandoned archives to study the history of the ancient Sith Lords before him. In an attempt to reclaim his connection to the Force, Bane rashly challenged Sirak, the top student of the Academy, but was completely outmatched, having to spend many days in a back to tank afterwards. During the same span of time, a former Jedi apprentice named Githany came to join the Sith Academy at Korriban. Seeing the potential in Bane, Githany secretly began to train Bane, even as every other Sith Master had refused to do so, and taught him the art of Force Lightning. Although her original purpose had been to manipulate Bane to do her bidding, she had both proved too powerful for her to control and had been training in secret with the Academy's Blade Master, Kasim. Several months later, Bane had restored his connection with the Force, and had grown stronger and more skilled than ever in the arts of lightsaber combat. Yethni, in an attempt to once again manipulate Bane, told him that she was going to challenge Sirak to a duel, a proposition that was met with complete surprise by Bane. Through this ploy, Githany had expected Bane to resort to tactics of secrecy and betrayal, but much to her surprise, he declared that he would challenge Sirak in the dueling ring himself. It was at this point that Githany finally understood that it was not she 
that had been controlling him, but he that had been using her. In his rematch against Sirak, Bane used all of his cunning, all of his skill, attempting to not only defeat, but completely dominate his opponent. He drew Sirak into a prolonged fight, and even when Sirak had exposed himself, Bane held back. Sirak's attacks eventually started to become weary and less honed, and in the final stretch of the duel, Bane crippled Sirak with a lightning fast strike that shattered Sirak's forearm and then split his leg in two. As Bane moved in to finish his opponent, Kasim interceded and saved the Zabrak's life. The next day, Bane was called into the office of the Academy Master, Lord Cordis. It was during this conversation that Bane realized the Masters of the Academy and the Brotherhood of Darkness were flawed. Soon after, a spurned Githany and a rejuvenated Sirak attempted to assassinate Bane, but Bane's cool confidence turned Githany back onto his side, and together they killed Sirak. During the end of the battle, Sirak had begged Bane for mercy. To this, Bane simply stated that those who beg for mercy are too weak to receive it, a motto of his that would continue on to his later life. On the day that the Sith apprentices on Korriban were to be given seats in the Brotherhood as Dark Lords of the Sith, Bane left the Order, denouncing not only the apprentices but also the masters, telling them that they had turned their backs on the Sith principles of old, and that Khan would eventually lead them to death. None of them were powerful enough to stop him. From the Academy on Korriban, Bane journeyed to Lehan, the home planet of the Rikata. If you've played Lights of the Old Republic, this was the planet that Revan landed on in his final mission to destroy the Starforge. Incredibly powerful in the Force, Lehan resonated with the equally potent power of Bane. Although he was attacked by a Rancor, he took control of the Rancor and located the planet's catalyst of Force power, the Temple of the Rikata. Once again, if you've played Knights of the Old Republic, you'll see that this is where you meet Darkseid Bastila for the first time after she is captured by Malik on the Leviathan. In this temple, Bane found Revan's holocron, and from it, learned what would become the basis of the Rule of Two. The following is an excerpt from Revan's holocron. By its very nature, the dark side invites rivalry and strife. This is the greatest strength of the Sith. It calls the weak from our order. Yet, this rivalry can also be our greatest weakness. The strong must be careful, lest they be overwhelmed by the ambitions of those beneath them working in concert. Any master who instructs more than one apprentice in the ways of the dark side is a fool. In time, their apprentices will unite their strength and overthrow their master. It is inevitable, even axiomatic. That is why each master must only have one student. Bane's revelation was that the strength of numbers was a trap, and one that had snared all the great Sith Lords of the past, including Naga Sadao, Exar Kun, and even Revan himself. All of them had been Sith, with awesome and terrifying power, which had in turn drawn in many acolytes. But as the Holocron stated, no matter how powerful the Master, the apprentices would eventually unite together and overthrow him, the strongest among the apprentices becoming the next master. Thus the line of the Sith would become increasingly weakened. Bane realized that for the Sith to thrive, two and only two Sith could exist. A master who holds the power and an apprentice who craves it. This would allow for the Sith to bide their time as their order became stronger and stronger, and until one powerful enough would fulfill Bane's dream and destroy the Republic. 
With this philosophy in mind, Darth Bane wrote what would become the doctrine of the Sith for generations to come, passed from master to apprentice, until Darth Sidious, the apprentice of Darth Plagueis, finally succeeded in realizing Bane's dream and destroying the Jedi, the Republic, and founding the Empire.